Hi, I'm Dr. Elsie Cook. Welcome to my channel. If there's one thing that I learned from interviewing my husband with regards to 4th of July, it's the reality that the signing of the Declaration of Independence actually did not end the war. What it did was it just gave Americans a focus Instead of fighting to gain better treatment from England, they were now fighting for American independence and liberty. Not only were they fighting for American independence, but they were fighting to protect and uphold the varied liberties and rights procured by the same independence. Spiritually, the same principle applies. Those who have been safe, according to the Bible, are truly free. In John 8, 36, the Bible says, So if the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. However, just because we have been given freedom in Christ Jesus doesn't mean that we don't fight for it anymore. The reality is the day that we have been saved, the day that you and I receive Jesus as personal Lord and Savior, is the very same day that we have become part of the army of God. Spiritual warfare becomes even more real once you become a believer. You may have the salvation. Yes, you are free indeed. However, as believers, we have a responsibility to continue to protect and uphold the very blessings that God procured for us in Christ Jesus. Spiritual warfare is something you and I must continually engage in. Every time I teach about spiritual warfare, I always teach four principles. The first is know who God is. Before you can engage in war, you need to first know who Jesus, who, who God is, his nature, who he is, and you can know him by first First step is receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, enter into a covenant with Him. And then the second is get into the Word, read the Bible, understand who God is, His omnipotence, His power, His greatness. The second is know who you are in Christ Jesus. A lot of times the enemy, Satan, demons can lie to you because you don't exactly understand how God sees you. The Bible says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made by God. The Bible says that you are more than conqueror in Christ Jesus. The Bible says that you are an overcomer. The Bible says that nothing can separate you from the love of God. The more you get into the word, the more you understand who you are in God. So what if people say that you are this and you are that? If God declares that you are more than conqueror, whose words are weightier? other people's or God's. It's very important for you to overcome and not be defeated in the spiritual warfare that we are in. Know who you are in Christ. The third principle is know who your enemy is. Human beings are not your enemy. People are not your enemy. Your enemy is Satan and his cohorts, his demons. And you know what? The Bible is replete of instruction outlining how the devil and all his demons operate. It's very important for us to understand that from the scriptural perspective. One of the things that the enemy does is he intimidates, he lies, he kills, he destroys. Those are only some of the things that the enemy does. But understand, understand how he operates. Understand how the enemy operates so that you don't become an easy prey for him. The last one is know how to engage the enemy. If you read the scripture, it will tell you how to engage the enemy. You engage the enemy by using the authority that Christ, that God has given you in Christ Jesus. Command the enemy to get out of your life. Be sober. Be vigilant. Be attentive. Get into the word. Arm yourself with the knowledge of God's word and his love. Stand your ground. Do not easily believe lies because the Bible says that the enemy tells lies. That's his language. I hope that you learned something today about warfare. Yes, you and I are free in Christ Jesus, but we have a responsibility 
to protect that spiritual freedom that God has given us. And not only should we protect that freedom that God has purchased for us, but we also have a responsibility to set others who are still under captivity and to fight for them, to pray for them, for it, to intercede for them, to declare words of comfort to them. God bless you. I will see you again next week.